One thing you'll find in your reef tank eventually is a little pest anemone. Aptasia, Majano, any way you slice it, they're bad news. Hi guys and girls, I'm Reef Man, and today it's all about pest anemones in your tank. The reason these anemones are such bad news is simply that they'll sting the animals that you really actually want in your tank, and then they reproduce so quickly and they'll fill every spot that you'd rather have some coral on. These anemones range in size from just a tiny little thing in your rock to a couple inches given time to grow. And they do grow quickly in the right conditions. You can see one here in the back corner of my tank where I couldn't see it growing. And I'm pretty sure this is some variety of Aptasia. And it's actually a couple inches across now when it's fully inflated. It's time to get rid of it. Identification of Majano versus Aptasia is really pretty easy. If the tips of the tentacles are hammer or bubble shaped, it's probably a Majano. Majano also tend to be more colorful, sometimes greens and blues. Really, it's a, it's a pity that they're so aggressive because they don't look entirely bad in the tank. Clownfish will even host in larger Majanos, but then again, clownfish will host in just about anything given the chance. Mine like the corner of my tank. So how do these get into our tank in the first place? Well, they hitchhike on rock or coral and frag plugs that you add. They're masters of disappearing into deep nooks and crannies in rock that you might be adding when you just start your tank. And a tiny part of one will go unnoticed on the bottom of a frag plug. So the trick to getting rid of these pests, or the trick is really to get rid of these pests before they spread further in your tank and just become a, a plague. So you know what you're looking at now when you see a little anemone growing in your tank and you know how it probably got in there. The little brown flower looking thing is probably an Aptasia or Majano anemone. So how do we get rid of it? There are a few options that we can use. Number one, just scrub it off. This is not a great idea on its own. These anemones are able to reproduce sexually or asexually by division. And so if you just pull them off the rock and scrub them with a toothbrush or something, you're really just gonna break up one into a hundred new anemones that'll all regrow. So if you go this route, consider combining it with option two. So number two, an extension of number one, scrub it off, but then treat the area. This could be as simple as just coating the area after you scrub it off with Cockwasser. And this variation works, but it's not a totally sure thing. So you want to remove the rock from your tank, scrub off the anemone as best you can, and then cover the whole area with super glue or cockwasser or something like that. And the idea is that you'll prevent the remaining bits of anemone from regrowing. And this will work really well, assuming that you've covered all of the remaining bits. So number three, chemical warfare. For this treatment, you will need a syringe and you can go to the local drugstore and buy a whole box of insulin syringes or you could go to your vet and get syringes from them as well. This is a three milliliter 22 gauge. The idea is that you're going to inject a fatal dose of something that won't hurt your tank but will kill the anemone. Something like a cockwasser slurry mix up a box of this, or you could use hydrogen peroxide to get it from your drugstore. Even lemon juice would work for this. The most common way to do it is to mix up a slurry of cockwasser into a thick liquid. Now, if you're using a tiny syringe, like one of these insulin needles, you have to make it thinner or maybe go the hydrogen peroxide route so you can actually get it into the needle. With a bigger needle, it's not so hard. The trick with this option is that it really only works well if you get the needle into the anemone to inject it. If you miss, which is really easy to do, you risk not killing the entire anemone. Also, a little cockwasser or hydrogen peroxide will be fine, your tank won't notice it, but a lot will definitely change the water chemistry. I also want to mention Red Sea's Aptasia X, or Joe's Juice here. I've seen a lot of people saying it works great, so I looked up the material data safety sheet, the MSDS, to see what's actually in it. And we'll, we'll scroll down past all the warnings, and you can see that it's mostly calcium chloride with a little bit of hydrogen peroxide in it. So you can certainly make this combination at home yourself, uh, though it's probably easier and cheaper just to buy Aptasia X unless you have thousands of these things to kill. Note though, uh, if you are killing thousands, no matter what you're doing, 
uh, it's going to mess with your water chemistry and Aptasia X will as well, it'll raise your calcium. And it does have some hydrogen peroxide, so it's not going to be completely reef safe if the anemones are amongst zooanthids or some other coral. There is another way, number four. You can use biological warfare. The last option that you have for controlling these anemones is just to find something that will actually eat them. There are various hermit crabs and shrimp, particularly the peppermint shrimp, one species of it, and some fish like the copper band butterfly fish or the nicely named Aptasia eating file fish. These fish will eat the anemones. You can also use a thing called a Bergia nudibranch, and although they will starve if you run out of anemones, so what a lot of people do is they'll pass these nudibranches around their reef community so they don't starve to death. All of these biological controls are going to work best when you combine them with manual removal. Sometimes a fish won't eat a healthy big anemone, but they will eat the remains of one that you've scrubbed off. In most cases, biological controls are best when they work, uh, or yeah, they're best when they work, but with the exception of the Bergia nudibranches, they are not going to be a sure thing. So there is another option, option number five the other methods that people try. Some people use things like lasers or electricity to burn and shock anemones in their tank. I really don't think this is worth the risk for most people out there. Strong lasers that are strong enough to burn an enemy is definitely strong enough to blind you, your fish, other pets, and they're gonna reflect all over the room while you're trying to get the anemone. And as far as electricity goes, don't we use grounding probes to prevent electricity in our tank? I'm not sure I'd even want to think about shocking something in my tank, and it's not always possible to remove rock from the aquarium to get an enemy on its own. So I would steer clear of these methods unless you're really confident in what you're doing. So that's it. Four good options and a questionable fifth option for controlling pests and enemies in your reef tank. I wish you all the success in fighting these things. Remember that they're not really that bad if you catch them early. Don't go overboard and make the problem worse than it is by trying to treat it in some crazy way. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more reef content. Thanks, I will see you next time. Bye.